Well, I'm just getting started with this new painting here today. This is a 18 by 24 inch canvas mounted to board and we have a mule deer buck. Now, this is for a client of mine who had inherited an old mule deer taxidermy mount and wanted the deer brought back to life. This is going to be located in Northwest Colorado where I actually lived once upon a time uh, while I studied and researched mule deer for the state. So this is gonna be a really fun project for me. I can't wait to get into this. I've dug into my library of mule deer photos to sort of develop a deer that would fit this set of antlers. I needed the head positioned correctly, um, which with what I was given for reference for the antlers. And I wanted them to be nice and big and mature, so I've included some skin rolls here. His neck's gonna be swelled up because this is going to be taking place in the fall. And I also wanna bring out these brilliant oranges as the sun is rising to the right side and shining against sort of the, the outer edge here. And then this side will be shaded. So I wanna bring out a lot of color in the deer itself. And then as the sagebrush hills roll back, I want some blue in the mountains and a colorful sky. So as I get started here and think about how I'm going to begin this painting, the first thing I want to do before I start blocking in colors is I'm really going to be working over the sky. And I don't want to lose the drawing that I have here, which I've done in graphite and I've sealed with a fixative, but I don't want to lose it under the paint. So we're going to do something very powerful, which will be very hard to cover up. We're going to take some black paint and we've just got some black acrylic paint here. And I'm going to start carefully following the sketch I have so we have a really dark outline and especially for the antlers because they are so intricate that's going to be really the focal point of this piece and we want them to be exact to the client's taxidermy mount. So we don't want to lose what we have here for the antlers. Now when I get down into the body, I'll have a little more play. I'll be able to get away with some alterations. But for right now, I'm just going to spend some time here and fill in everything that's above the horizon because we'll be working on the sky next. Take some white on my brush. I've got all these little piles. I'm going to be mixing different colors with each one. So I'm going to start with some, some white. I'm going to pick up some red and some yellow, probably more yellow. I'm going to mix that in a separate pile here. And then mix that in. I want more yellow, but not a lot. And then I'm going to take some black. I'm going to mix some black in there. And we'll start with sort of a medium tone, warm gray. I might pick up a tiny bit of that light blue permanent as well. It's going to bring things more to a kind of a greener hue, but it's very, very, very limited. So I'm going to pick up that color and I want to start thinking about the shadows of the clouds. Now, as I'm blocking in to get started here, there's really no wrong way to go about this, but I want things to be close to how I would like them to be finished, close to the finished product. But I really don't know. I like, I've got an idea in mind, and I've seen this many times in the skies, where you've got some clouds here in the distance, and then you've got maybe a bigger cloud. This happens especially around these island mountain ranges in the west. You've got this big storm cloud, and starts to spread out up top and I want that effect up in this area
And so by using this color of gray, I can essentially sketch with my paint. I can just kind of play with some ideas. This is a very non-intrusive color, so we can cover it up easily. It's just good to play with ideas before we commit to something. So I'm gonna have some clouds like that. Oh, uh, boy. I wanna have some hard edges in my clouds here too. So the colors we lay down here, again, are super unimportant right now because it's just such an early stage. I'm focused more on the contrast than anything, not necessarily the, the color. So that's why we're using a very neutral color to start with. But I may end up keeping some of it. Well, get very undecisive in the beginning here. Uh, I like this. I'm thinking about this. What is this going to be? You notice how we can still see our deer underneath here, which is why I started with those heavy black lines just allows me to forget about the deer, focus on the background. Okay, that is a pretty good start. Just thinking here, I want some of that gray to kind of float off this direction and kind of in between here. Okay, now I think what I'm going to do, so that's essentially our shadows. Now I'm going to go around the highlights because we've got highlights already. The canvas is white. We don't need to paint that white just yet. There's no sense in painting my highlights when it's already white because we may not like the way we paint our highlights. So I'm going to paint around that what I hope I'm going to like with some blue here. And that'll be kind of what will be around the clouds is some blue. And so I've mixed some blue by using cerulean blue and light blue permanent. That's kind of a go-to for me. I like the way that color comes out usually. So we're just gonna get some on the brush. I'm not gonna be using all that pile. And I'm gonna take some white. I'm gonna mix a little more of that in there. Start fairly light here. Okay. And then I think what we're going to do add some yellow. Small amount. Very small amount. This is going to bring it to a turquoise hue. I like that. I like that color. So you'll notice too, I'm really scrubbing this on so that it's very thin. I want things to dry fast. I don't want to have any bumps in the paint right now. I don't want to create any ridges. I want things to be nice and smooth because I am undecided at this point. So. Let's just start with that. Let's put some up over here as well.
Okay, so thinking about this more, I think I'm on the right track, and I'm gonna stick with most of it, which might add some more shadows like I mentioned over here, but I want to darken these shadows. And that was kind of the biggest thing that I think I decided I want to do. So I'm gonna take this black, mix it with my white, add some blue, Now, the clouds down low are going to have a lot more variation because we want them to appear further away. So, in order to do that, they're going to be more intricate and they're going to be narrower, not quite as tall. And where we went over our antlers, I'm going to wipe just so we know where the edge of our antler is. And we're going to end up having to repaint that black line. For now, that'll work. And same thing with over here. I'm just going to keep going with that color. Just rolling the brush around. Flat brushes make for great clouds. Creates a lot of variation. So what I'm doing right now is I wanted to block in some of the area down low in the foreground with some darker tones as well as block in the deer and get that contrast established so that I had something to compare alongside with the sky so that I know how dark I want certain values in that cloud to be. So I'm just blocking in that deer, establishing some of those oranges and those darker values before I move on any further with the cloud in the background. So now that the deer is blocked in, and it's very simple at this point, because when I work on the sky and also the background here along the mountains, I'm gonna be going over the top of this just because I don't like to paint around things. I like to set the tone for something and things might spill over into the deer. So for now, I know this is a very simple um, rendition of a deer, but 
There's a lot of time left to work on that. I didn't do anything to the antlers other than just maintain that outline. And basically at this point, we're gonna get into the sky, really dive into what we want the sky to end up to be and focus on more contrast and just bringing out some color as well. So I'm gonna switch, now that I get kind of into that fine tuning stage, I'm gonna switch to things, especially for the sky, brushes that are more round and I've got like a double thick filbert, just a nice round brush. This is a quarter inch filbert. And then I've got two of these round blenders, a big one and a small one. So what I'm gonna do, and I'll probably start with this bigger size round blender. And I'm gonna get some water, got some water in my hands. Just get that brush damp and I'm gonna bring out more blues, more shadows through this area, more oranges, and just start to work on that transition. And I'm also gonna fix some of the, the blue sky. I'm just not happy with the tone of it. I'm just gonna get some white along with some, along with some blue. And some black. Well, might want that to be more gray. Something like that. So kind of start by laying in some of this color. And I'm going to keep going. A lot of this paint will go a long ways. And so I'm going to keep the brush moving and slowly that paint's going to start to dissipate off the brush. See, we're just going over the antlers just like that. The paint starts to really dissipate on the brush, like I said, and then we can start to just buff some of this color on. And the layer will become lighter, and as it becomes lighter, I'll move off maybe into some of this area. So it's starting to get that way where we just don't have a lot of paint left on the brush. And so this is just putting on a nice light layer. And these shadows are going to take a few more layers before I'm happy with it. This is just kind of a necessary step to get it a little bit closer to what we want it to be for the end result. Watch the brush and I'm going to take some white as I let that dry, some orange. I'm just going to start bouncing around areas that could use some color. I'm going to take some more white. switch to a dry brush and just kind of fan some of that out or I could use just my finger in fact I like that better and I'm also going to work on that transition zone between the darks and the lights Work on blending that out more. I want things to be very soft. I'm going to go for a soft look to start, and then I'll probably start adding some hard lines, some texture, once I'm happy with just the general composition. So you can see that's starting to become softer. This is just wet on dry. Things dry fast. So we just start scumming layers on top. And then I'll also work 
some of that blue, particularly as we get low into the sky, want things to be more of a gray tone. So I'm going to start to just dampen some of that blue down. And that's going to take a few layers as well, but start to gray that up. Even take that gray, move it further up into the sky here. And then once that layer dries, I'll kind of come back down from the other way and blend that together even more so. But that helps at least to start and I'll work down with a tone of blue faded into there. Do the same with over here as well. Get some of that gray on there. Every little bit counts, so whenever I have a color on my brush, I just look for areas I can put it on wherever it is fitting. So I'm going to poke at this guy for quite a bit now. Just smoothing out. No different than what we've just done. All right, now at this point, what I'm gonna do is, I've got some nice smooth transitions that are starting to form, but before I work too hard on those, I've got the general idea established, so now I'm gonna add a different layer before I dive into some of those areas more so, so I just don't waste a lot of time. So I'm gonna switch to this, I've been using this a little bit, but I'm gonna switch to this quarter inch filbert brush, because it has a good hard edge to it very thin on one side and I'm going to start by creating hard edges and those hard edges are basically going to be clouds that are sort of floating in front of whatever's behind it so we're going to put some hard edges through here through here and then we're going to float some clouds kind of up above here that would be closer to the viewer Let's start by just mixing some gray and some black and some white. Kind of find that color that's in this area. And I'm going to start maybe out here. That's pretty dark. Add some white to that. There's really no wrong way, I've said this a lot, there's no wrong way to do clouds. You just gotta keep it random. So these hard edges will start to shape some very unique features. 
It's going to add a lot of depth to these clouds. And I'll do the same with white as well. Doesn't really matter what you start with, as long as they get on there. This is very subtle against that color behind, but that'll make a big difference. So I'm going to start the long process of doing just this.
you see what's happening here? As I begin to add this tone of gray blue and I started to break up this area here, this area through here, through here, I broke up this area through here, how that just started to add this next level dimension to our cloud. Th this cloud here started to take shape, looking like it was floating further towards us and pushing back this cloud. So now we've got some more depth to this area. I'm just, I'm super excited because this is a, a prime example. I get a lot of questions on this of just my process. This is a prime example of how persistence really pays off. And if you just keep working at it, don't give up. The, you've got to fall in love with the process of figuring it out. And by just continuing to work at it, you break through that, that, that wall of frustration and things start to take shape. And in your mind, you can visualize what you want this cloud to be. And I can see that for myself now. So if I continue to do this, breaking up more areas through here and here using this color, and then in reverse, using highlights to start breaking up, maybe adding a few more clouds just floating through here. And uh, same with down in this area by using this lighter blue and just breaking up some more of this cloud through here. And then also maybe mixing like a pink, maybe a gray pink, this, this color here, and starting to break up some of the highlights. I just, I know that this cloud is going to come alive. So I thought this is just, a, it's just a great example of how things can really change for you in a moment. So I'm gonna keep working on this and uh, I think you're gonna see this cloud just transform from, from good to great here in the, in the next few minutes here. So I wanted to finish by adding some color to the antlers, some contrast to the deer as it goes through the sky, just so it gives you an idea of where I'm headed with this painting, but it also allows me to compare how are the antlers going to look against that sky. It's just kind of the final step to reassure that I've done the sky how I want it to be and that the antlers will stand out nicely against that. Right now, I think I'm thrilled with the sky how it turned out. I think there's a few imperfections that I could work on, but 
I think it's really easy to over critique ourselves before we get to the rest of the painting. So I'm going to work on building texture through the foreground, building up all the foliage down here, and I'll do a video show you guys how I do that, as well as the fur in the deer. We're going to build a ton of detail on the deer itself. I'll do a video on how I add some of the fur detail on the deer itself too. But as I begin to build the rest of the painting down through here, it'll really minimize things that maybe I think are off or things that I'm not happy with or not satisfied with in the sky. So at this stage, I like to leave it. I think it's beautiful. There's some things that I might not like about it, but I'll determine that once I fill in the rest of this painting. So until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out my free print giveaway if you'd like to support my channel, as well as my website or eBay auction link, which are both in the description below. Please be sure to ask questions if you have any. We'll see you next time on another episode of Paint Like a Pro.